Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. And this time, I wanted to show you the sequence of steps you go through in order to reject all mythic power when going down the legend mythic path. Basically, there'll be three separate instances of you attempting to do this. And each time, or in fact, actually it's four, it's four separate instances of you attempting to do this. And each time, Aurelu will intervene and try to stop you. So it's actually some really cool dialogue, really cool sequences, and I thought you all might get a kick out of seeing it. So let's go ahead and get started. The sound of your footsteps echoes around the empty halls of the Midnight Fane. Every step that brings you closer to the rift is answered by a pang in the wound above your heart. Stop. Now that the goddess and the demoness have gone, we need to talk. If you have something to say, just say it. I do have something to say and it is important, even more so for you than for me. Hear me out before you go any further toward the rift to the gates of midnight. Do not make a mistake that you cannot undo. I understand. Aurelu pauses. Surprisingly, she seems anxious. I understand that you think you've been tricked and used. It is not so. I simply could not reveal the whole truth to you without provoking the wrath of the three demon lords who have all been paying close attention to the events of the wound, Nocticula especially, as she knew more than the others, but I have never tried to hurt you. The process is still reversible. Stop. Your power will come back to you and you can use it to defeat all your enemies. Power is not just an indulgence. Power is freedom. Aurelu's voice suddenly warms with passion. Freedom to do whatever you want, to protect whomever you want, to punish whomever you see fit, and to not be afraid. To not be afraid of any gods or demons. No one who can spin you around like a toy. Are you certain you want to reject that? What risk would I be taking by rejecting my power? You will have to tear your soul apart, literally. Until very recently, I believed that this process must inevitably end in death, but now it seems that arrogant goddess knew about a loophole, a way that would allow you to do this and survive. The process has already started. The soul, the essence of the abyss that I implanted in your soul is gradually separating from it. And with it, your power is fading. What about me dying from the war wound? If I keep the power you've gifted to me, I'll keep this deadly disease too. That is true, but this issue can be solved. As you now know, there are two keys to the war wound. It can be closed with either of the two. The one that closes it will die, but the other will survive and their soul cured of its affliction. Why did you mention the two keys? Are you prepared to sacrifice yourself and close the wound to let me live? I am prepared. Aurelu hesitates. Prepared to give you a chance to settle things between you and me without any interference of gods, demons, or other uninvited guests. Why do you want to stop me? What do you gain from that? I cannot, I do not want to lose something I have put so much effort into. And I do not want to see those who tried to thwart me, who tried to crush me, triumph. I gave you power no mortal has ever possessed. Now you want to get rid of this gift? Arilu gives you a searching look. Let's say I give in to your demand. What happens next? Your power will return to you. It will not require any special effort. It is already a part of you, one that you are so irrationally intent on destroying. Reject this madness. I am ready to support you. I can even gift you something from my personal artifact collection. Trust me, there are plenty of items to interest you. Requires legend mythic path. My answer is no, I will not stop. I want to get rid of this alien power. It is not mine and it has never belonged to me. You do not know what you are talking about but I can't stop you, not yet. Well, go on then, go and meet your demise. I will visit you again, once you have realized what it is you have wrought.
the flickering flames of the rift, the gates of midnight, as Ari Lu called it, illuminate your face. You recall everything that happened here, your fight with Derizan, the surge of power that followed, and then that step into the abyss. Alarm rises in your soul and your wound begins to pulse once more. It's as if your heart is demanding you to do something, to feel, to realize, to decide. Reflect on what it means for you to be yourself. You turn your gaze inward, seeking to realize, to discern, to find that something that constitutes your essence, to be yourself. What does it mean to be yourself? The vision fades. Could this be the truth? That there is nothing left inside you except for this. Recall your life before you gained mythic power. In your thoughts, you return to your past, to the moment before you gained your power, before you were brought, wounded, to the main square in Kenebrez. You remember your childhood. Memories arise in your mind, but they are not what you were expecting. Pictures of your childhood flicker and fade. Instead, you see the dimness of the cave lit only by the shimmering light of huge underground mushrooms and lichens. A silhouette bends over you, whispers something, and hands moving. The purple glow of a Nehendrian crystal glints before your eyes, and the wound in your chest responds with a brief flash of pain. The vision fades. Can it be that the memories of your recent past are so deeply embedded in your mind that they have overshadowed all the rest? No temptation can change what I am. I am immortal, and I want to remain immortal. For a brief instant, you are overwhelmed by terrible weariness and exhaustion. You become disoriented and you start shaking violently, but as the fit subsides, you feel an unusual clarity of mind and an influx of energy. Along with this comes a realization. You must press on. You must revisit the places where you felt the surges of your mythic powers, step by step, as if returning to your past. And the next place you must go is not too far, in Dresden, the place where the Sword of Valor fluttered in the wind before the army of Crusaders. And as you can see, go to Mythic Path. Now, at this point, usually we would be at Mythic Level 7, but since you rejected your Mythic Power and are now slowly taking it away, your Mythic Levels are slowly decreasing. The Sword of Valor, the great relic of the Crusaders, has saturated this place with its divine aura. Your wound is making itself felt again. It seems to be burning, but it doesn't feel like it did during the previous burst of pain. It is more like the itching sensation that accompanies a healing scar. But this along with this sensation comes anxiety. Your heart pounds harder and harder, as if it's trying to break out of your chest. A chill seizes you, and somewhere at the limit of your hearing, you can make out alarmed whispers and moans of pain. Recall the moment you raised the Sword of Valor. It was my triumph, but still others lie ahead of me, and I'll accomplish them by relying on no one but myself. A short spasm shakes your body, a voice you can barely make out utters a desperate shriek, and immediately, something appears in front of you. A vague silhouette, an indistinct figure that bears a striking resemblance to... Who are you? Who are you? Why are you tormenting me? This will be quick. Why? Why? It hurts so much. Now do you see what's happening? 
Arilu's projection appears before you instantly, as if she had been waiting for this particular moment. You are killing yourself, literally. Stop now, before it's too late. What was that? Your power is trying to take shape and prevent you from getting rid of it. It is part of your soul. With it, you are whole, no matter what you think. Suppose I agree with you and decide I want my power back. What will I gain from that? Power and freedom. The chance to rise above the fate prescribed to all mortals. Do you truly wish to become weak? To be subject to the whims of higher powers? To endure the fear of death again and again when you can take your fate into your own hands? I am a day lied to you. She convinced you that she cared about your well-being. In truth, the only thing that interests deities, even the so-called good gods. Arilu spits the last two words with unconcealed contempt, is holding on to their celestial thrones. They were the ones who created a universe where pain, violence, and injustice reign supreme, and where mortals are given the most pitiful lot imaginable, living a ridiculously short life, dying of sickness or injury, powerless to control their own souls after they die. Why would you want to regain all that when I gave you so much more? I don't care what I am a day's intention was when she tried to push me towards this path. I would have chosen it anyway. This path is mine, truly mine. Anger sparks in Arilu's eyes, but her voice remains cold and calm. Very good. Let's see how much longer you can hold on like this. Just remember that it is not too late to step back. The witch's projection disappears. Silence falls. You are no longer shuddering from the cold and your heart stops pounding. An odd feeling grows inside your chest. This is how birds must feel when they navigate over oceans and continents to get home. You sense where this vague call is beckoning you to. The Lost Chapel. The place where you defeated Nokaneth and felt the surge of mythic power for the second time. And now you're at mythic level five. You continue to be stubborn, Arilu says dully. I must offer you one final chance. Step back, regain your power. Stop maiming your own soul. If all my reasoning fails to persuade you, I am willing to offer you a gift of several unique artifacts from my personal collection. You will never find their equal anywhere. Step forward. One of these days, I'll get to you. But now I have something to do, so I'll do it. Arilu attempts to say something else, but just purses her lips and looks at you with cold fury and, strangely, alarm. Then she disappears without a word. This is where Nokoneth fell. The memory of the dawn over the Lyle's Chapel rises before your eyes. Suddenly, a sharp pain grips your heart, and the same ghostly creatures appear before you, like the one that attacked you in Dresden. But this time, there are more of them. They seem more fully formed, more solid, and filled with angry desperation. The ghostly creature that you fought is convulsing in his death throes and whispering indistinctly, Who are you? Who are you, my enemy? Why are you trying to kill me? Why? Why? And who are you? The creature does not answer, muttering its refrain of who are you? Why? Once more, it disappears like smoke in the wind. Awareness is dawning in your heart. 
You are approaching the end of your path, the direction, the focal point, the place where it all began and where it all must end. That place is the Grey Garrison. Level three. Here it is, the place where it all began. The place where you felt the surge of mythic power for the first time and showed it to the world, defining your future and the future of the Crusades. The memory of all that happened here is still fresh in your mind as if it were yesterday. If you listen very closely, you can almost hear the voice of the Crusaders fighting nearby. See the light of the corrupted Wardstone. Look into the eyeless face of Monago. What is that? You feel your heart gripped in a vice, and a moment later, the ghostly voices become more real, but they are not the Crusaders. You are surrounded by a crowd of ghostly figures, and your eyes are inexorably drawn to the one who leads them. It looks like you, the way you were, and the way you could have become. Who are you? Who am I? Who am I for you? What did I do to you? You hurt me. Why? How could I know who you are? You can't answer that question yourself. The creature doesn't seem to hear you and a hollow voice and mumble something that doesn't seem to make any sense. They came suddenly when no one expected them. They wounded so hard it was unbearable. The wound hurts. Whose wound? Who am I? Who is killing me? Gradually, the voice of the creature becomes more threatening. Need to fight need to defend myself, need to prevail, need to fight, defend, prevail. Who is killing me? Who? Dying hurts. It hurts. Let's have some fun. What a last woeful shriek. The creature rushes towards you and dis suddenly disappears. A sharp pain bores into your chest and you faint. The darkness Adventures finally complete. looses its grip on you and as it fades, your senses return one by one. First comes the sense of touch. You feel heavy shackles binding your limbs. Then your hearing returns, bringing the noise of distant thunder, which sounds too repetitive and too regular to be natural. And finally, your sight comes back, but it provides you with no valuable information at all. The place you are in is completely unfamiliar. I should have accepted long ago that some experiments inevitably end in failure. Aurelia appears before you, her voice cold, furious, and calculating. A sacrificial dagger gleams in her hands. But sometimes admitting defeat, even if it is only temporary, is very difficult. I regret that it all must end like this. I have been watching you for too long, searching for traces anticipating a particular outcome from my experiment. Prolonged contact creates a sense of attachment to a subject, but you left me no other choice. Aurelu's eyes flash viciously. You should not have rejected your power. The result is inevitable. You are powerless before me now. Where are we? In the place where the world wound began. This is Threshold, once my prison and now my citadel. Where are my companions? Alive back at the Grey Garrison. Without you, they hold no interest or threat for me. What are you going to do now? Kill me, close the wound, and save yourself? I suppose I can allow myself some honesty now. After all, you, in your current state, will not see what is about to happen. I am planning to sever your soul, the last link connecting you and your, what shall we call him? 
your shadow. Arulu's tone is pensive and her voice softens slightly. You have already seen him back at the Grey Garrison. He is the personification of the part I once planted in you. The part you no longer wish to have anything to do with. All the preliminary forecasts indicate that you will not survive the severing process, or else I will have to endure that you do not survive it. I still need your soul, but severed from your current personality. Alas, I cannot work with it in its current iteration. I intend to stoke Phrasma's wrath by keeping your soul tethered to this world, and then I will reunite it with your shadow through a new ritual, the third now, that will create a new being, my latest attempt. And, in addition to that, it will expand the war wound again. It is difficult to predict how far everything will go. Mendev will most probably be destroyed utterly. New rifts will appear within the bounds of the wound. New demons and demon lords will enter the fray. Nocticula will be enraged. However, those are all just side effects of the experiment. Sediment at the bottom of a volumetric flask, a one-line footnote, in a laboratory journal. Say nothing. I once again ask myself, how much of the previous personality remains after death? Arilu moves her hand with the dagger in it, flexing her wrist. I need your soul purified, just raw material, without the addition of emotions and memories, something I can work with, soil, in which I can grow the seed. After a pause, she adds, no longer speaking to you. Come forth, please. The creature you fought in the Grey Garrison appears before you again. Since last time, it seems to have become more solid, more clearly formed, and that form looks incredibly like you, even despite its inhuman features granted by the power of transformation. The shadow stands, swaying slightly, and touches its face and shoulders as if trying to fathom, to understand. So this is the seed you are going to plant in my soul? In my soul, the shadow repeats in your voice. In my soul. Suddenly, the shadow's eyes light with understanding and stare directly at you. His voice still sounds like yours, but the words are his now. I understand now. I know who I am. I am you. Requires legend, mythic path. No, you are not me. I am not you. And I can see that clearly now. The sensation these words store in your soul can be described simply as the falling away of chains. You take a deep breath, as if you are breathing freely for the first time in forever. And along with the invisible chains that fall from your soul, the shackles Arulu used to immobilize you fall away too. This cannot be. My predictions, my forecast, none of them predicted. The witch mutters, recoiling. The shadow shrieks in pain and presses his hand against his chest. You close your eyes and then open them again, staring at the world as if for the first time, sensing yourself, your wholeness, your power. The walls of the ancient prison of Threshold tremble. Adventures can wait. We just need to wait a little more, Soot. A Nazi will be back soon. I know it. Ember strokes the crow's feathers. A hunter can lie in ambush for hours until their prey comes along, but I can't stand waiting with no end in sight. I can't bear this waiting anymore. We need to go back to Dresden and organize a search party. There's no way we'll fail to find out what happened to a Nazi. Sela taps her foot impatiently. I just loathe all this fretting and waiting. Won't someone please do something ridiculous so I can mock you mercilessly? It would be a welcome distraction and a balm to my benighted soul. 
Otherwise, I shall be forced to wonder what has become of Anansi, and that is unbloody bearable. Well, it would seem that this is the end of our crusade. Pity. A ringing voice drowns out your companion's words. There is no need to worry. Your leader was taken by Aurelu, but the witch could not keep him prisoner for long. I told you Anansi would be back. Ember smiles happily. Oh, light of the sword. Sila moves as if to drop to one knee before the goddess, but then she notices you and freezes in hesitation, pondering whether she should continue her greeting or rush to you. Anansi, you're all right. Darren utters a sigh of relief but immediately covers it with an insouciant smile. So, the goddess from heaven has graced us with a visit once again. Goddess, was it you who helped me break free? I had no hand in it. Everything that happened was your doing. You do not need my help, Anansi. You have enough power to win this war by yourself. The goddess bows her head slightly. Still, thank you for telling me the truth and helping me choose the right path. I did what was right and just. I could not have acted otherwise. And trust me, nothing saddens, saddens me more than my need to stand aside while mortals shed their blood in defense of Galorian. I was not granted divinity for showing self-restraint. I have cleansed my soul of the Abyss's essence and of the Nehendrian Crystal's power. Now what? The voice of the goddess is solemn and soulful. The war wound will no longer kill you slowly from within, and the power of the Nehendrian crystals will no longer alter you, changing you into an unfathomable creature. You are a mortal, Anansi, and you will go down in history as a hero who won his ultimate battle, the battle against himself. Friends, it's time to go. This war won't win itself. I must warn you. You have offended Arulu Varlesh gravely by rejecting her tainted gifts. The witch will never forgive you for that. For your own safety and for the safety of Galorian, you must deal with her once and for all. May her black soul serve a good cause for once by closing the wound she created. The goddess pauses. You and I, we are like reflections in a mirror. I tread a long and difficult path to gain the power of a deity, and you have done the same, but to get rid of yours. Know that I admire your courage, and now I bid you farewell. Good luck. All right, and now you are officially a legend, which also means that whatever your character level is will um, double. So I think when I actually uh, did this, I had done a couple of other uh, quests and things. So I was level 18. And I immediately jumped up to level 36. Your um, levels will actually increase faster than your companions. So you will get to level 40 before your companions get to level 20. So obviously, it's really, really awesome. Looking forward to releasing builds for this mythic path. But that is the video. Hope all of you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave me a like down below. Share this content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.